back with the car you always see in the background, but I never really talk about. Uh, is our 2012 QX56 four wheel drive. We got it. We've only had this car for probably, I want it, we got it in 2017. So we got this car like, uh, I want to say six months before I got my Q50. And it was weird because we ended up both getting cars in the same year. And yeah, that was, that was not done on purpose, but it kind of, kind of happened like that. Uh, this car, honestly, uh, I didn't really like at first until I started finally do my, doing my research on it and, and looking at what, you know, the underpinnings of the car and what it's actually based on. Uh, they changed this. This car is based on the, you know, the patrol platform. I think it's called Y52. Apparently this car has like a, at least overseas, you know, Australia and, you know, desert. Uh, this car has a cult following, at least in the, under the Nissan nameplate of the Nissan Patrol. And it's like a major off-roading car and, you know, rock solid reliability. And then, you know, it got the V8 in there. What is it? 400 horsepower, 413 feet pounds of torque. I've seen the dynos on these cars. It's like 380 something, 86, 87 to the wheel. And then like another 380 something feet pounds of torque to the wheel. So it doesn't actually fall off too much from what they telling you is at the crank and uh, what's actually to the wheel. Uh, it's uh, This is the newer version of the 5.6 liter. A lot of people confuse the the Armada and uh, and a QS56, you know, like, oh, it's the same car, it's the same car. Uh, not really, because you got the older version. You have the VK56 DE, and then this is the uh, VK56 V, you know, letter V, D, meaning that this one has vivo similar to what the exactly what the your g37 has and then this is you know direct injection also which is interesting to have you know a direct injection v8 infinity had it for the longest but they never put direct injection in under the g's and I, you know with vivo you know you would have thought i would have thought they would have done that but hey, they decided to go to the vr30 which i'm kind of happy about i like the vr30 obviously so but anyway this car you know it kind of grew on me uh once i found out like i said once i found the history behind it and i found out that it's not just some you know big luxury car that you're just going to ride around town that actually cannot do anything off-road and you know like most most of these cars these suvs around here they they not so you take them off road they they're going to fall apart. They just glorify people, people, haulers that, you know, they just don't want a minivan. <laughs> so, and we have actually took this car off road. I want to say at least four or five times already. And it made it back. Uh, we've, we've climbed. Uh, I wish I could, I wish I had the video. I don't know if I'm going to have it. If I do, I'm going to put it in, but we've climbed the incline like, I don't know how what degrees that is. Something way, you know, way less than 45 degree angle. You know, we climbed it with snow while pulling another car. And the car made it all the way up the hill with no problems. Because this car, you know, I found as I'm learning more about it and I will learn more about it, it has real four wheel drive. You got four wheel drive high, four wheel drive low, but it also it has like a hybrid type system with the all with it's four wheel drive and all wheel drive y'all like y'all saying thing ain't that the same thing no it's not it's not the same thing so when you're just driving the car normally the car is in all wheel drive mode 
Meaning, and it's and it works very similar to what's in the uh, Q50, a G37, G35, M37s, to where it sends power to the rear uh, mostly. Uh, well, say if you're just cruising around, it's in rear-wheel drive mode. If you get on the accelerator, it starts getting a little more power to the front. If the back wheel slip, it got more power to the front, and then it does a similar thing as the Q50. Uh, where at initial start, the car is, uh, you know, four wheel drive, you know, it uses all four of the wheels as initial start. And then it, uh, switches back to rear wheel drive. And then how it is actually four wheel drive is that it will, it actually locks the front and rear axle together. So that's what makes it actual four wheel drive, four wheel drive, meaning that all the front axle and the rear axle spin at the same exact rate where all wheel drive each individual wheel can be a portion some torque so that's the difference so y'all can know but you know the marketing is so most people don't know about these little minute details so they just market everything as all wheel drive nowadays but there's four wheel drive and all wheel drive are two different things Anyway, that's to the side, you know, but the, the car, we brought it, uh, like I said, a year ago, I mean, it has some miles on it. Uh, I want to say like 80,000 miles, but it was in pristine condition. It still is, but I could not believe that the, the car, the car looked with it having 80,000 miles on it. And you know, the pictures were just great. And it was like, it's no way it's, they doctored these pictures. And when we get there and the car looked better than the pictures and i been having very good luck on buying uh, used cars and especially used Infinities. Well, I guess because I, you know, I know what to look for, but still, so luck and skill and finding these these gems. And this is one of them. It's I think we had like a almost 115,000 miles on it now. Has not given us one problem. Has not. I mean, nothing has went wrong on the car and we have this car has been it's been from georgia to uh chicago illinois georgia north carolina georgia to ohio georgia to florida i mean the, the car has been road tripped i, I mean like, like you see in six seven eight hundred mile road trips you know one way so we're talking about 12 1800 mile road trips nothing just cruises along and it and it's not it's surprisingly gas mileage is surprisingly uh good uh, well yeah good is for suv let's put it like that you know you get in the, the low 20s on the highway and you get about 400 you know, a little over 400 mile range, a 20 gallon tank. So, and then, you know, this car doesn't, it can take premium all, all the way down to the regular. I don't ever put no regular in it. We, you know, at worst I put mid grade, you know, but in general it's premium in here. Cause you know, it, it tells you in the man, you put regular, you're going to lose power, but it's going to still run. So if the gas prices shoot up and we got this car, you know, Throw some regular in there and, and you're good, you know? So I, that's another thing that I ended up liking about the car was, you know, like I said, versatile with that V. And then the V8 is strong. It's, even though this car is almost 6,000 pounds, this V8 has no problem moving it around. None at all. It's, it's, it's surprising because a lot of people, other SUVs usually don't have a chance against this car. Your Tahoe's and all, psh, then get up out of here. Only car probably got a chance, maybe your your Audi Q7 or something like that. Some more sport oriented type SUVs will have a chance, but your but your runner of a mill Tahoe's and your Explorers and and all, nah, this this smokes it. And then we smoke a lot of cars too. It's always crazy. You in this big six thousand, almost six thousand by SUV, and we floor it, and they like, what the heck, you know. <laughs> I love it. In order to do an oil change on this car, you know, like I said, it, you know, earlier, this car is like for real for off road. So it has an actual metal skid plate right here. 
and it's a couple of bolts to get it off and it protects the the oil filter oil filter is like right here somewhere and it protects it so you have to pull this off so but as you see i don't have i don't have to jack up the car because there's so much space right here <laughs> jack up the car so um so the oil change is slightly annoying with this actual skid plate and it got a little weight on it too but at least i like jack up the car i guess Kind of junk we gonna find. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. I don't know how he got in there. <laughs> but as y'all can see, that's. That's a real skid plate. That's 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 real. You know, it's a luxury car. I mean, but it's basically like take some big bodybuilder weightlifter and you put him in a suit. That's basically what the QS56 is. Then so we have like it's package wise, we have the deluxe touring package, and then we have the wheel and tire package with these big old 22s on it. My wife likes that. I kind of want to go down to 20s because I know we about to have to replace these tires and it's it's going to be a grip to replace these tires. I think these Bridgestone Duelers are about 1600 to replace them. I'm probably not going to put Bridgestone Duelers back on it. I'm probably going to go with um, the uh, Pirelli Scorpion Verde. They are about a thousand brand new. And they actually are better rated than these. So I don't understand why Bridgestone gets to price their tire so high when tire of a lower price got better rating. I don't know. But the tire, the Bridgestone tires aren't bad. They 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 ride, you know, good and surprisingly good grip. And talking about grip, this car has a very special suspension on it. So like I said, we got the we have the wheel and tire package. We have the deluxe touring package, and then we have the theater package. The deluxe touring package gets you a whole bunch of goodies on the inside. You know, like this is a real, this is luxury. You know, all the little luxury stuff you can think of, it's it's in there. But it's 2012. But even still, it's all the little amenities are in there. But what the deluxe touring package gets you that's most important is the special suspension. And this suspension is. Same thing as like your McLaurin cars have. It's completely, uh, all the shocks are connected together with fluid. There are no sway bars. And this car, when you turn it, it's, it stays almost flat. I mean, it's, it's probably a very minute, a little bit of roll on the car. And then the car just stabilizes flat. And if you, so we had like a rental and we were driving like a Tahoe that didn't have the mag ride on it. And you drive the Tahoe and the Tahoe was a damn boat. And then you come get it in this, you feel like you're driving a sports car. So that's another thing that ended up making me, you know, it grow on me because, you know, I was just like, I was just big old SUV, just get something smaller. Shit, I wanted a, 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 something like a, a Kia Sorento or something like that, you know, something smaller, you know, but my wife, she liked these big cars. But after driving it, 
combine, you know, you add the engine and the suspension, and then it has the old trusty seven speed. That's the same seven speed. Well, uh, modified version of the seven speed that's in your Q50, G37, M37, across the all infinity lineup that have it. Same seven speed. That's how versatile that seven speed is. You know, check out my seven speed transmission video. But it's the same one in here. It's got like a, instead of A at the end of the, uh, the, the number, it's a B. And it's modified to handle the different type of transfer case that's on this car. Because this car, like I said, this car got actual four wheel drive. So it has a different type of transfer case that actually can lock on the end of it instead of the, just a, you know, normal clutch based um, transfer case that your Q50s and your G37s have. So, you know, but anyway, the, the handling on this car is actually good. And it's weird to say about an SUV, but it's good. But it's using the same thing like McLaurin with the, with the, so if you go look up some videos on a McLaurin suspension and you will find out how this one is. And then the suspension here, unlike the Q50 suspension, Q50 actually, con for the Q50, they contracted it out to Monroe. But the suspension on the, on the Nissan Patrol QX56 is actually Nissan's design. So this is Nissan technology on here and and they call it um they call the suspension hydraulic body motion control. And I'm probably going to end up doing a video on it the cuz it's actually pretty cool the the how they do this. There's no sway bars and the car does not lean. It's pretty cool. All right, let me show y'all what it looked like up on this QX56. All right, once you get the cover off, you see the radiator and condenser. There's a lot of space right here. And then you can see that it has the, it has an oil warmer. You know, a lot of people think this is an oil cooler. It's actually an oil warmer. And then it has the actual oil cooler right here. And it, it looked like it got double the lines going through. So I might, I won't be surprised else to find out that the transmission, yep, the transmission goes through here too. So they are cooling the transmission and the uh, oil using the same cooler. As you can see, this line right here and that black right here, the black tubing, that, that's transmission line. And then if you look right here, you see that going right to the oil warmer. <laughs> and so, yeah, this is to give it some legit off-road chops. And if you look right here, let's see, can I get that on video? If you go up here, it's connected to a radiator up here, but you can't see that. So it's got some actual real cooling and, and I guess your warmer can act as a cooler if, you know, the overall engine happens to be cooler than the oil, but that don't really happen that often. So, yeah. So that's what it looked like. And then... The actual oil pan is back here. And then you see your front diff right here. I haven't changed the fluid on this front diff yet. That's another one of the projects. And then the transfer case back there has some special fluid. It uses some type of special gear oil. You know, on the Q50s and G37s, it's using transmission fluid in the transfer case but since this is a for real like i said high low um for real four wheel drive it's actually using gear oil in that transfer case and it's some nissan specific well it's it's some like maybe one or two other companies that make it and it's like it's super expensive and it needs a like eight i don't want to say he needs somewhere above five quarts. I can't remember exactly, but he needs enough of it that the almost twenty something dollars a bottle makes that even doing it yourself like a hundred dollar job. So I can imagine what the dealer charges for you to do that yourself.
But it's on the list since the car is over a hundred thousand miles. It's on the list to do. You know, all three, the differential, the the transfer case, and then I've already done the rear differential on this car. I already did. After you know, after we did some towing, we did. Like I said, we have used this car like a truck. You know, you see if you've seen pictures of my car being towed with this car. And we've told other people's cars and other stuff around with this car. And what is it, an 8,500 uh, pound towing capacity on this car? So that's pretty stout on this, on this truck. So I've actually, you know, used that, that towing, you know, not just riding around town being a people mover. Like I said, that's what makes me like this car a little more, that it's it's a real truck. And if you can see this frame and stuff up under here, this is a real truck. And then it's a peek at that special suspension from the bottom. Uh, it's air shocks in the back. It's, it's air shocks and the regular shocks in the back. So this car does self-leveling also. Like I said, all the bells and whistles. Bodybuilder in the suit. Anyway, let's get to this oil change. These are usually 14s, so we got a 14 on here. I think it's this set. Nope. There we go. This car has been sitting, so I don't expect this oil to even be hot. This car has been sitting. I'm doing a complete change over to the quicker state like I did on my uh, Q50. So I want the car to sit so I know all the oil is at the bottom. All right, where's my napkin? I will let that drain. Uh, this car is, what, seven quarts of oil? And then as you see, I don't know, I think the camera can see this, but Mobile One Extended Performance Filter like I usually do. M110 or 110. That's what I usually say, 110A. That's all I'm looking for. And let all that seven quarts come out. I think this oil has been in the car for uh, about almost 6,000 miles. Uh, it's mobile one extended performance was in here. So I do about the same drain interval on my Q50 as I do on the QS56. Uh, there's no big car, like I said, carbon rock solid reliable. No, like you see, no leaking. This car has it, nothing's leaked, nothing. I mean, this, <laughs> I mean, this is like almost too good to be true. How, how just bulletproof this car has been. Making me like it more. All right, we're done draining. Let's pop back on this bolt. Hand tight and then a little bit of torque on it. All right, there we go. Now this filter is while it's easy to get to. It's actually a little messy see you got the drain ports right here already on it because they already know a tad messy uh, actually it's not as messy as the as the uh, Q50 though 
Not as messy as the Q50. But still is messy. Got that suction, that pressure still on it. Alright, there we go. Should I better do it by hand now. Oh, still got a little bit. There we go. Still a little messy, but not too bad. A lot of oil in this car. <laughs> Feed that big old V8. And there's a long bolt on here, too. There we go. Let that drain. Oil don't look too bad. While that's draining, I always just kind of take a little bit. Leave it up. So we get a nice seal. You can do it with the old oil or the new oil. It really don't matter. It's going to be on the outside anyway. All right, down to a drip now. We'll start cleaning up the area as much as I can. You want to make sure you clean up the outside area too so you can get a good seal. You know, we still got oil coming. But once it's down to a drip, I usually, I'm not going to sit here and wait that long. Got my next, uh, other oil thing, other one ready, like I said, my mobile one, high capacity. And then hand tight. So if you, if you over tighten this, you won't get it off. <laughs> if I got it good. Yeah, there we go. Shouldn't be leaking anymore. That's how you know you got it good. Because when you wipe this off, it shouldn't be leaking anymore. Yep. No leak. Let's clean up this drain area right here. Since the this V8 is direct injection, I decided to also run the same Quaker State that I run on my Q50. And it needs, like I said, uh, seven quarts. So, put this first five in there. Then we'll do two out of the other one. And like I said before, this stuff pours very nice. I was surprised by that. Thank you all day to get it in there. Man, like you from my other video, you know, I'm not really a big need the oil to be perfectly measured as long as i know is about seven quarts in there i'm good so that's five quarts or almost five he said i had a little bit left in there and then i need to actually get this one down to the three line so i have to kind of measure here so, I'm going to be using the measuring on it. I got to get it down to that three on the left. So, let's do that. Three point five. I keep looking over to the right and not looking to the left. 
All right, just a tad bit more. We at seven. And uh -huh, a little bit more. And there we go. Seven quarts. And there we go. All change done on a 2012 QX56. I'll probably do a future full review on our 2012 QX56. But yeah, this, surprisingly, this car has a, a cult following and I think I have now became a part of that following. So if you haven't already, like and subscribe.